What's going on guys? So today I'm going to talk to you about video settings. Uh, I haven't done a how-to video video, I guess you could say in a, in a while, but there are some differences between um, video settings and photography settings. So first we're just gonna cover what we already know. Um, aperture, basically all you need to know is that the lower the aperture number is, the more background blur you're going to get like back here so right now my aperture is set at 2.8 so that's you know pretty it's like the average um, professional look i guess you could say 2.8 is pretty pretty average but lower than that you'll get a very uh shallow depth of field i'll, sh I'll put my 50 millimeter on and show you what i'm talking about with the whole aperture thing aperture is basically the blurry background lets more light in uh, their low aperture lenses are actually better for anything during nighttime where there's not a lot of light So just keep that in mind um, White balance. It's pretty easy if you are outside use either daylight or cloudy and when I'm inside Depending on whether the light is more green or more white if it's more um, White I'm probably going to use tungsten and if it's more green inside, I'm probably going to use white fluorescent So ISO, in photography, a higher ISO is more um, able to be saved because you can always just make the image black and white. And if it looks grainy, it's fine. A lot of black and white images um, do a good grainy. However, with video, you do not want grainy video at, at all. You've seen like really crappy like videos people take on their like Android phone, or even iPhone sometimes, and, and it's like a really low lit place. And the image is fuzzy. That's when the ISO is too high and it's, it's gonna make your image look like, like crap. So always try to have your ISO the lowest it can possibly be. Right now, mine is at 800, but 800 is passable. You really don't wanna go past 3200. For video, honestly, I wouldn't even go past 1600, but 3200 is like that like final limit. And then 6400 is like, don't, like you shouldn't even be filming to have a good image if it's just something crazy at nighttime that you're filming then that's cool but like if you want like a cinematic image 6400 is way too high at least on Canon cameras Sony's on the other hand they're kind of killing it in a low light game so congrats on that one Sony so we covered the basics you know keep your ISO as low as possible if you want a more cinematic dreamy look keep your aperture low but if you want a more sharp like for example, like war movies and stuff like that, their aperture is up higher because everything needs to be in focus and be really tack sharp. White balance, if you're outside, use cloudy. If you're inside, it's either white fluorescent or tungsten. Um, I use tungsten a lot more than white fluorescent, but that could change. Here is the biggest difference um, between video settings and photography settings. There are two things. You have shutter speed, and now you have frames per second. And basically what frames per second are, a lot of a lot of films are filmed, I'm filming in it right now, are filmed in 24 frames per second. It's the most natural looking motion. Um, 30 frames a second is a little bit higher. That's like a lot of sitcoms are filmed in 30 frames. And then you have 60 frames per second, 120, and it just it just keeps going on. This camera can only go up to 60 frames per second. Okay, so if you've noticed, uh, it looks weird now. The motion looks weird now, right? Uh, I've changed the frame rate to 30 frames a second just to show you the difference between what I mean. So yeah, this is what 30 frames look like. Looks like this is a lot of YouTubers actually filming this, and I don't really know why. I've never really been fond of it, but it's you know whatever floats your boat. So now I'm going to switch to 60 frames a second real quick. All right, so now I'm in 60 frames a second, and you can definitely tell it's even weirder in 30 frames. Um, the downside to uh, which I forgot to mention the downside to filming in a higher frame rate is you're going to usually you're going to usually have to up your ISO Because your shutter speed is going to increase because double the frame rate and it's going to make your image darker When you're filming in higher frame rates, you are going to need more light to compensate for You know, like I said the higher frame rate, but yeah, look how weird this looks like just moving 
around. All right, now I'm gonna switch back to 24 and then you're gonna be like, what the heck? Yeah, just know in video you have frames per second. Uh, usually I only use, I, I never use 30. I don't really see a reason to use 30. It's either 60 or 24 frames per second. Your shutter speed, however, so this is actually pretty important. Uh, whatever your frame rate is, so if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, your shutter speed should be at least at 1 48th, or if you have a camera like mine and doesn't go to a 48th of a second, you gotta go to a 50th of a second, which is pretty comparable. I'll, I'll tell you when to break that rule, but this is just a steadfast rule. Uh, just for general filming, YouTube, you know, whenever you go outside, things like that. Your shutter speed, double your frame rate. Just, just always do that. I've been doing it and it, it works. If you're shooting at 60 frames a second, your shutter speed should be at 1 25th or 1 20th of a second. So that is natural looking with the shutter speed. However, you can break that rule and I'll tell you like when it's usually done. So if you've ever seen like a hallway scene in a movie where they're like walking around stumbling and everything is like, there's a bunch of motion blur and you can't really, nothing's really in focus, um, but you're disoriented. That's really, that's when you crank your shutter speed lower than what your frame rate is. Frames a second. Well, it doesn't have to be lower than your frame rate, but it has to be lower than double, if that makes sense. So, now in a lot of fight scenes, uh, what they'll do, it's very well used in like the Bourne movies. Uh, you'll, you'll notice it more now that I've told you. Um, Extraction, that new movie on Netflix, you'll see it there too. Um, but you'll crank your shutter speed higher than double. So it'll give a very jittery, like very fast moving effect. You want everything to be in focus and all the motions to be like, you don't want the motions to be blurred out because it's like a fight. Everything's happening really quick. So that's when you would do that. Those are the only two instances I know of that you would break that rules for a fight scene. It's more than double your frame rate. And then for like a disoriented or like a dreamy type of motion blur, the shutter speed is gonna be lower than double your frame rate. Okay, so frames per second. I'm gonna go back to this real quick. So 24 is pretty much the cinematic king, like gold, that's the sweet spot for cinema. Regular moving. Now, if you want to slow things down and use slow-mo, your frames have to be higher. If you try to slow down 24 frames a second, it's going to look terrible. It's going to look really blurry and it's just going to, it's just not going to look good. So what you have to do is have a higher frame rate. Um, 30 frames a second, you can't really, you can slow it down, but it's like, you can only slow down 80%, which is not, it's not a lot. So 60 frames a second, it's actually a little bit higher than the Hollywood standard. A lot of Hollywood uses like 50, but basically you can slow 60 frames a second down a lot and get really nice slow motion. That's how I do my B-roll and stuff like that, is from using 60 frames a second, make sure your shutter speed is double that frame rate, so 1 25th of a second. And that's gonna give you really nice, the ability to slow it down really nice. Uh, so 60 frames a second is used a lot for at least in my opinion, sports, uh, skateboarding especially, because if you want certain parts to be slowed down, you can do that. Just to rerun over everything, keep your ISO as low as possible. Use the correct white balance. If you're outside, daylight or cloudy. Inside, tungsten or white fluorescent. So your aperture, keep it low for a blurry background. If you don't want a blurry background, you want more in focus, then raise it a little bit. I find that this lens actually does really good at f4, so you might only have to do a couple stops, so it's not that bad. Frame rate, make sure you are anticipating what you're going to film, so if it's like a movie or something cinematic, always 24 frames a second for like normal movement. If you're going to do anything slow-mo, 60 frames a second, and you'll be able to slow it down. And remember, shutter speed, double your frame rate, that is the most important thing, remember that. That's all that I got for you today. If this was really lengthy, I apologize, but thank you guys for watching my videos. I hope you learned something from this and that it actually helped you with, if you're gonna start YouTube or even filmmaking or just anything, I hope this helped you a lot. Cause it helped me when I realized that like the frame rates and the white balance I was shooting in was completely whack. I mean, I don't even know what I was doing. But now that I know a little bit better, we should be good. So um, I appreciate you guys, you know, constantly supporting my channel I really appreciate it that's all that i got for you today have a good one guys take care peace out